Hello? Secretary McNamara, Lino. Okay, President, we just had word by telephone from Admiral Sharp that the uh, destroyer is under torpedo attack. I think I might get uh, Dean Rusk and Mac Bundy have them come over here and we'll go over these retaliatory actions and then we ought to... I sure think something. you'll agree with that, yeah. And uh, I've got a category here. I'll call it to them. Now, where are these torpedoes coming from? Well, we don't know. Presumably from these unidentified craft that I mentioned to you a moment ago. We thought that the unidentified craft might include one, uh, one PT boat, which has torpedo capability, and two SWAT top boats, which we don't credit with torpedo capability, although they may have it. What are these planes are doing around while they're being attacked? Well, presumably the planes are attacking the, the ships. We don't have any uh, word from, from Sharp on that. The planes would be in the area at the present time, all, all eight of them. Okay. Thank you get them over there, and then you come over here as soon as you can. I'll do that, yeah. Tension is high. Conflict between the United States and Vietnam is inevitable. The USA isn't pleased with Vietnam's communist takeover and is more than ready to move into the country. On the nights of July 30th and 31st, 1964, South Vietnamese boats attack islands in the Gulf of Tonkin. The boats move out after an hour. On the other side, the USS Maddox, a huge American destroyer, commissioned in 1944, moves into the area after midnight the same day. The USS Maddox spots nothing out of the ordinary. Three North Vietnamese patrol torpedo boats appear at the horizon and are quickly approaching the USS Maddox at high speeds. The North Vietnamese boats begin firing torpedoes and guns at the American ship. The Maddox fires back and the U.S. jets on board the Maddox join the fight. One North Vietnamese boat sinks and the others retreat. Other than a single stray bullet, the USS Maddox was left unscathed. Despite the incident's location off the coast of Vietnam, news travels quickly and it has an immediate impact on the other side of the world, most notably in Washington, D.C. President Johnson prepares an address, and in it, he warns Vietnam that the United States will respond to future attacks. A second attack reportedly occurs sometimes after this announcement. There is little to no evidence of the attack, and its details are shrouded in mystery. It involves the USS Maddox, however, we later learn that the Maddox is sent on another mission on the day of the supposed assault. This encounter encourages the USA to take offensive action, but Lyndon B. Johnson isn't ready yet. He proposes the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, a document granting the President additional military powers, the most important of which being allowed to use a military force around the world without Congress's permission. It passes unanimously in the House and is 98 to 2 in the Senate. It seems like a great idea at the time and makes sense when paired with events in 1964. However, it will backfire. hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply.
information eventually reached the U.S. that a second attack never actually occurred. There was no evidence of the second attack, while there was actual proof of the first. And there were multiple accounts of the first, with none of the subsequent. American suspicions about the government being untrustworthy increase, especially because the war wasn't ending, and now some people are saying the event which started the war was staged by the U.S. government. American pilots and officers from ships such as the USS Ticonderoga, which was sent to assist the Maddox and Turner Joy, told the same story, that there was no second battle. Lyndon B. Johnson eventually changed his own perspective on the story. He went on record to say, For all I know, our Navy was shooting at whales out there. In 1981, Captain Herrick of the Maddox and journalist Robert Shear re-examined Herrick's ship log and determined that the first torpedo attack on August 4th, which Herrick had said was the apparent ambush, was in fact false. James Stockdale, a pilot who was flying over the scene, eventually wrote in his book, Love and War, that our destroyers were just shooting at phantom boats. There were no real PT boats out there. Vo Nguyen Giap, a now retired Vietnamese defense minister, admitted to Vietnam attacking the first time but fully denied a second on August 4th. In the fall of 1999, after being tasked with determining whether the second attack actually occurred, retired CIA executive S. Eugene Podiet concluded at the end of his research that there were no torpedo boats or attacks on U.S. forces on the night in question. The White House, however, was only interested in news that the event actually occurred, not in news of the opposite. In 2005, an internal NSA study reinstated the same facts that disproved the second attack. It gathered together all evidence of the event and is seen as the true recount of the Gulf of Tonkin events. The report stated, it is not simply that there is a different story as to what happened, it is that no attack happened that night. In truth, Hanaway's military was engaged in nothing that night but the salvage of two of the boats damaged on August 4th. And because of the Gulf of Tonkin resolution and incident, Congress set out in 1973 to create the War Powers Resolution. It was a federal law intended to check the powers of the president when committing to a war or conflict. Because it took away powers from the president and weakened the presidency, Richard Nixon, president at the time, vetoed the bill. However, Senate and the House both overrid it and it became a bill anyway. Conspiracy or truth? Reality or fiction? Despite the events of the Gulf of Tonkin conspiracy being shrouded in mystery, everyone has developed their own opinion. What's yours?